why there is so much sin. Have you ever thought about that? Sin penetrated even the church and causes many Christians to stumble today. Why people hurt one another? Why even very elect choose to cause strife in church and division? And there are many divorces even among the Christian family. Should not the people of God believe in lives in such manner that it is worthy to be called sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father? See, Bible teaches us that Satan is after the chosen ones as well. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, we read in Matthew 24, 24. Let's take a look deeper. When we read in Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Everything starts from the childhood, from the mother's womb. How many of you today are reading this and read the Bible with your children daily? By not training up a child and not teaching a child what is right from wrong, children simply do not know the perfect standards of the law of the God who is to protect us from all the evil if we chose Him. Since the great war in heaven, the fallen angel has been here on earth working to deceive as many as possible. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy, but Jesus comes to give life and life in abundance. We read from John 10.10. 10. We need Jesus. We need him to be in the midst of us, to protect us, to guide us, to give us his light in our lives. We do not know what is right and what is wrong unless we look at Jesus and his word. This is why it is so important for us to be in touch with our God and to read from the Bible daily. Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says Jesus in Matthew 11:28. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The prophecy of Jesus coming to this world and taking all the sins of this world. We see it back in the Old Testament. We see that Jesus has chosen voluntarily to come to this world, to be the Lamb to whom we can turn to in all our distresses, in all our sicknesses, in all our problems. Do you want to know more about Jesus? Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. We read in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. Only through Jesus we can obtain the life, know the truth, know right from wrong. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is our heavenly attorney. Jesus is the one who is pleading for you and me right now with God to wash away our sins. Are you in need of Jesus' healing today? Do you want to break all the bad habits and generational curses and whatever is preventing you from fully accepting Jesus? We read in Mark 5.41, He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Well, Jesus is speaking to you and to me today, little girl doesn't matter of your age and little boy doesn't matter how old you are he speaks to you today and says little girl you are Jesus's little girl and little boy and he can welcome you back into his arms and say get up come with me I will heal you and I will give you new you new life for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God all we have to do is open our heart to Jesus today and he will come and he will enter he knocks and if whoever opens he will come and dine with you don't forget that when you have a special experience with the Lord who heals you who makes a miracle in your life who brings you forth and keeps your enemies behind share your faith with the little ones share your faith with your friends Share your faith with your family and your loved ones. We read in Psalm 78, I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children. Telling to the generation to come to the praises of the Lord, 
are you and me today telling our children, telling the next generation about Jesus, what he has done in your life, what he can do for you in your life? If right now you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh no, my sins are too great and there's nothing that I can do anymore. I have sinned too much in my life. I've done horrible things. Well, Jesus has a great news for you. When we invite Jesus to our hearts, he washes away every bit of sin. Not because something we do on our own, not because we become so righteous that our acts are saving us. No, Jesus and his grace alone can wash away the whole world's sin. All we have to do is say, yes, Jesus, come to me right now, fill in my heart. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. This is how David was pouring out his heart to God. David was a sinful man, like everybody else in this world is sinful, but Jesus. And he turned his heart to God in Psalm 51, and he poured out and he cried and he said, please wash me. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And today I am saying, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And today you can come to Jesus and say your prayer. Every time you will find something new in that Bible passage and it will completely change your thinking and the way we think. And it sanctifies because the Word of God sanctifies. It reproves us and it changes us. It doesn't mean that we don't need to do anything on our part. Of course, Jesus came to give us a good news. If we accept, we want to change our ways. We want to start treating other people according to the Jesus' teaching, which is kindly, respectively. We want to abandon all sorts of sins and all forms of evil. We want to walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. You do not have a tomorrow. I do not have tomorrow. No one has promised that we will have tomorrow. But today is an acceptable time. I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It is now the perfect time to get on the knees and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want to be a new creation. I want to get my heart cleaned thoroughly. I want to close the door to any form of sin and invite Holy Spirit. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 Everyone has sinned, and we all in need of repentance. We need God's healing to take place today. No matter how much you have suffered, and justly, how much Satan has been after you with his bow and arrow. Many were brought to Jesus with various diseases, and he laid his hands on everyone and healed them. Today, you can be healed and you can be freed from any past that is tormenting you, from any bad habit, gossiping, lying, stealing, hurting others with words, anger, lack of empathy. All of those feelings can be healed through Jesus. Scripture is powerful, powerful enough to transform. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. He who does not love does not know God, for God is a love. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Treating others with love, compassion, and respect is the evidence that God is in our hearts. For by grace you have been saved through faith. 
and that not of yourself, but it is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. No one is holy. Everybody makes mistakes. And the righteous may fall, but will arise and will repent and will keep walking with Jesus until we meet with him. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. What do we need to see? We need to see Jesus and we need to see His truth, not our truth. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. If you have any sin, the demon will most likely come in, dwell and bring seven more more powerful than the first ones. Be aware that until our hearts are completely surrendered to Christ and are seeking His word daily, studying, praying, and waiting to hear back on what God has to say about our lives, we are in dangerous territory unless we do all these things. Behold, Jesus will come fast. Our lives are not guaranteed tomorrow. We don't know the hour and the date for our death time. But Jesus will come. And the next thing we will know is we will be either running towards Him and hugging Jesus and saying praise to you, Lord, because my Redeemer lives. I believed in you and you are saving me and you are covering me, my filthy garments, with your white clothes or we will be in the category of running away from Jesus. Which category you want to be in, the first one or the second? I pray today that you would want to be with Jesus and you will not be running away from Jesus and hiding behind the rocks because the judgment is coming. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are plundered. O Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness that you may be saved. How long shall your evil thoughts lodge with you? For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The final judgment is of the Lord. His words are the final words in our lives that we will hear. He will judge everyone accordingly, and we have a chance to repent. Would you pray with me today, and would you join me today in the desire of following Jesus and knowing more about Jesus? But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that the day should overtake you as a thief. We have a light, we have a hope. And if you want to be in the midst of the chosen ones, I pray that you can fully surrender your heart to Jesus today. Please subscribe, like, and share this message because many will be able to be saved from the hearing of the Word of God. Thank you.